Week 14b, Gas Laws. Rather than going over a problem on each individual sheet for this worksheet, uh, what I'm going to do is go through an example of each of the different laws that are in this worksheet. There are five main gas laws that we're going to be working with in um, this packet, and they're on the first page of your reading material that you were given with the packet. So we have Boyle's Law, Charles' Law, Avogadro's Law, Dalton's Law of Partial Pressures, and the Ideal Gas Law that we've already worked with back in our Stoichiometry of Gases packet. So what we're going to do is one example problem, actually on one of them we'll do two, but one or two example problems for each of these laws. Each one has its own formula. So Boyle's Law, you can see, deals with pressure and volume. Charles' Law is uh, working with volume and temperature. These are all about gases, so volume and temperature of a gas. Avogadro's Law deals with volume and number of moles. Dalton's Law of Partial Pressures just deals with um, the different pressures within a mixture of gases. And the Ideal Gas Law involves P, pressure, V is volume, N is number of moles, T is temperature, and R is the ideal gas constant, which we used again back when we did gas stoichiometry, which is 0.0821 liters, uh, liter atmospheres per mole Kelvin. So we use this for R uh, as long as we are measuring our pressure in atmospheres, our volume in liters, uh, number of moles here, and then our temperature should be Kelvin. Now our temperature being Kelvin, is true for all of our gas laws. We really need to use Kelvin for these um, or they don't work properly. So make sure that you're always changing to Kelvin and remember that means you have to add 273 to all of your Celsius temperatures. So what I'm going to do, uh, I've made this sheet and you can get a copy of this from your teacher if you'd like. If you want to pause this now and get a copy of this worksheet you can or um, some of these are actually in your packet if you want to just find them and then answer them as we go through in your packet. So, <clears throat> pardon me. So here is a Boyle's Law question and it shows me here that for Boyle's Law the initial pressure times the initial volume will equal the final pressure times the final volume. So I'm going to go ahead and write that down here and it's P1V1 equals P2V2. And then I'm going to plug in what I know and solve for the one that I don't know. A sample of oxygen gas occupies a volume of 250 milliliters at 740 torr of pressure. And it asks what volume will it occupy at 800 torr pressure. So I'm looking for the new volume. I have the old um, pressure and the old volume here. And so I'm going to plug these in. So my old pressure was 740 and my old or initial volume was 250 milliliters. And that's going to equal to 800 times my unknown V2. So I'll multiply these two together and then divide by 800 to solve for V2 because I want V2 on its own on one side of my equal sign. So I keep it here, bring 800 to the other side, since right now it's multiplying. To bring it to the other side, I need to do its opposite and divide. So I'm going to bring this over to the other side, and I'll plug into my calculator. 740 times 250 divided by 800, and I get 231.25. So V2 equals 231.25, and since it's in its volume, my volume was in milliliters, and my new volume will also be in milliliters. So here is my answer, and that's using Boyle's Law. A couple things I do want to point out. Make sure that your volumes are using the same unit, and that your pressures are using the same unit. <coughs> if ever you have uh, two pressures or two volumes given to you that are in different units, you will need to convert them so that they are in the same unit before you can plug into this formula. So, for example, if uh, one pressure is measured in torr and another one is measured in atmospheres, ATM, 
make sure that you do convert it and the conversion factors are in your packet for you on the pages that you'll need them. So the next one is Charles Law and it shows me in my reading material that Charles Law is initial volume divided by initial temperature equals final volume divided by final temperature. So V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2, and I'm going to write that down, V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2, and I'm going to plug in what I know and solve for what I don't once again. So my sample of nitrogen occupies a volume of 250 milliliters at 25 degrees Celsius. All right, I'm in Celsius here, so I need to add 273 to get my Kelvin temperature, which will give me 298. And I need to do the same thing here at 273 to this Celsius temperature. And let me plug that in my calculator real quick. It's going to give us 368 degrees Celsius, or excuse me, 368 Kelvin, which is what I need rather than Celsius. And then I can plug these in. So my V1, my original volume, is 250 milliliters over T1, my original temperature, was 298 Kelvin, and that equals up to my V2 is what I don't know. What volume will it occupy? I don't know, so that's going to stay V2, and that's over my uh, final temperature, which is 368 Kelvin. Easiest way to solve for these is to cross multiply. So I'm going to multiply these two together and divide by this one. So multiply uh, in an X and then divide by the other to get my V2. <coughs> so it will be 250 times 368 and then I'm going to divide that by 298 and I get 308.72. 308.72 and its volume, my volume was in milliliters, so my new volume will also be in milliliters. Now, next one is Avogadro's Law. Avogadro's Law shows me that my volume divided by my number of moles will be 22.4. There are 22.4 liters in one mole of gas at standard temperature and pressure, STP. And we did this in the gas stoichiometry uh, packet as well, using 22.4 liters equal to one mole when we were doing our stoichiometry. So what we're gonna do here is V over N equals 22.4. So I'm gonna write that down, V over N equals 22.4. That's volume divided by number of moles. And it says a sample of chlorine gas occupies a volume of 43.6 liters at STP. And I want to know how many moles of gas are in that sample. So here's my volume, 43.6. 43.6 over N equals 22.4. In order to solve for this, what we're going to do, um, if you're not sure what to do at this point, if you don't know if you're supposed to multiply or divide, what you can always do is put this over 1 because anything over one is still itself, and then cross multiply from there. So we would 43.6 times one divided by 22.4. So it's gonna be 43.6 divided by 22.4 because 43.6 times one is still itself. And I get 1.95, and N is number of moles. So 1.95 moles would be in 43.6 liters at STP. My next gas law <coughs> is Dalton's law of partial pressures. Dalton's law of partial pressures tells me that my total pressure is just the total of all of the pressures of the individual gases combined. So you can see the total pressure is equal to pressure of the first gas plus the pressure of the second gas all the way out to the pressure of the last gas involved. So that's pretty straightforward, right? The total pressure would be just the total of the pressures. So my P total equals all of my pressures 
combined. And in this case, I have, it asks what's the total pressure of a mixture of gases if the partial pressures of the gases are oxygen is 150 millimeters of mercury, nitrogen is 350 millimeters of mercury, and helium is 210 millimeters of mercury. Well, that's one, two, three gases, so P1 plus P2 plus uh, P3. And so my total pressure will be 150 plus 350 plus 210. It really is that easy. So my total pressure here is going to be 150 plus 350 plus 210, which gives me 710. And they're all measured in millimeters of mercury, which is another form of uh, measuring pressure of a gas. All right, so that's our answer for this one. And now I'm going to use Dalton's Law of Partial Pressures again to answer this question. It says a quantity of gas is collected over water at 20 degrees Celsius. If the total pressure is 34.6 kilopascals, what would be the pressure of the dry gas? In your reading materials, there's a page that looks like this, Dalton's Law of Partial Pressures. And it shows me that sometimes I'm going to collect a gas over water. It gives me a way of keeping the gas in a container without any of it escaping because the water will keep it from escaping from the container. So what I need to do, if I want to know the pressure of the gas that is being collected in there, um, then I need to subtract the pressure of the water vapor to find the pressure of just the gas by itself. So this data table here shows me the vapor pressure of water at different temperatures. And so I can look up what the pressure of the water would be, the water vapor, and subtract it from my total pressure to know what the pressure of just the dry gas is that I was trying to collect over water. So in this case, it says a quantity of gas is collected over water at 20 degrees. Here's our total pressure. And it shows me here again, the pressure of the dry gas is equal to the total pressure minus the water vapor pressure. So I'm going to take my, um, to find the pressure of the dry gas, I need the total pressure, which is 34.6 uh, kilopascals, and I need to subtract the water vapor pressure. And that's going to be found in our data table here. And since we're at 20 degrees Celsius, here's 20 degrees Celsius, my pressure in kilopascals is 2.3. So I need to subtract 2.3. And so my pressure of just the dry gas alone will be 34.6 minus 2.3, which gives me 32.3. And again, since I'm measuring my pressure in kilopascals, since I've got pressure as my answer, I need kilopascals as my unit. One last one. The ideal gas law, which you've already done in your gas stoichiometry, um, is the following formula is PV equals NRT, if you happen to remember it from your gas stoichiometry packet, PV equals NRT. So PV equals NRT. This one's saying if I have four moles of a gas, that's N, at a pressure of 5.6 atmospheres, that's P for pressure, and a volume of 12 liters, there's our V, what is the temperature? So I'm gonna solve for T. So I'm gonna plug in what I know, Pressure is 5.6, volume is 12 liters, the number of moles is 4, R is my ideal gas constant, which remember is 0 0.0821, and I'm solving for temperature. So I'm going to multiply these two together, and multiply these two together, and then what I can do is take this and divide it by what I get here by bringing this over to the other side to solve for temperature. Remember when I bring this number to the other side it will divide. So 4 times 0 0.0821 is going to give me 0 0.3284 and this will go away. And so now I need to do 5.6 times 12 That gives me 67.2 to go here, and I divide that by the 
3284 that I got for the other side and I get a temperature of 204.63 and since we're working with temperature and I know that for my 0.0821 my temperature has to be in Kelvin my unit will be K for Kelvin. So we've gone over one or two examples of every law that's in your packet. For the remainder of the packet, you're just going to be watching the videos um, and filling in the blanks and doing some practice problems through the video. And then on the worksheets where you actually have to use the laws, do it just like we did here. But if you do get stuck on any of it or still have any questions, please do come ask.